bite my tongue? Never. See, what they don't know is, they don't, they don't. they're tuning in to DBYC Podcast, and I'm just discovering the world around me. Kaisha, I love you. It be like God is telling you to keep going. You quit on yourself, you really down bad. Tune in Wednesdays at 7 o'clock Eastern Time. Welcome back. Welcome back to yet another episode of DBYC. I am your host, Taisha, and today we are getting into part three of Bari B, the interview, and this section will be focused on Love Bari. So if you're not familiar with that project, go check it out on your favorite streaming service. And with that being said, let's get into it. Moving into Love Bari, can you tell me the story behind that? Oh yeah. So Love Bar was Love Bar is actually a love letter to the industry. Um it was I created Love Bar because I felt like I've never been able to put a project together that was truly like me. Mm-hmm. Like when I started engineering, like I was trying different sounds and, and different plugins and, and getting my like getting my own music to where it sounds great. Well, I'm like, yes, this is perfect for what I want this song to be. And it gives the right emotion. So Lil Bar like started off with, uh, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll go down the list. Go ahead. I'm fine with it. Uh, so Love Don't Cost a Thing. Well, don't Cost a Thing. So basically that backstory, short, I'm going to do short backstories. Okay. I was watching Love Don't Cost a Thing, um, of course, with Nick Cannon. And, uh, yeah, it was some stuff that was going on. I, you know, I observe. I'm very observant. Like I talk and I do all that, but I'm very observant. I observe my surroundings. And it was a, a person I know that was going through uh, some domestic um, violence in their relationship. And uh, it was just like, why? You know, so um, look, uh, don't cost a thing. was just like, yo, like, you don't know, but like, literally, you don't even have to pay and it could be handled. You know what I'm saying? The most respectful manner. Um, and that's how that first song came off. That that was that came from that. Cause I'm I'm a firm believer of uh, domestic violence. Um, I don't I don't like it. Like I'm a firm believer of it shouldn't be here. Um people just need to have conversations and and talk and, and the man shouldn't put his hands on a woman, the woman should put his hand, put her hands on a man. And it should it just it's no reason, you know what I'm saying? You gotta do all that. Y'all might as well just leave each other alone and yeah. move on. Then going to the next song, Falling. It was a girl. Um, <laughs> it was this girl that, like, you know, when you really falling for somebody, it's like, even when it was like, baby girl, I'm falling for you. I'm falling for you. Like, I be, like, back when I was working, like, making that song, like, I was falling for the girl, but I didn't know where I wanted to go, like, it's like okay, I'm falling, but what do I want? Like, you know, what what what's next? Like, you're falling, where you going? You know, so that was that song. Um, then track number three, late night drive. I told you it came from a text message on Twitter. Well, not text message, but a tweet on Twitter. And uh, yeah, and me driving to go get some food. And yeah, from there, late night drive. We can take a late night. I heard the beat too. And a lot of these songs, I didn't write until I heard the beat. Like I hear the beat and it just like activates a whole nother, like a whole nother something else. So um, that was that. And then the next song at the, uh, at the late night drive is, I believe it was different. No, it's like it. It's like it. Okay, sorry. I'm I'm over here. I'm over here thinking. It's a lot of records in my mind. But if I'm not mistaken, it's like it. Like it was created. That was actually the first song that was created out of all those songs. Um, I love that song. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna hold you. I love that song. <laughs> Listen, like it was a song that like I ain't gonna flex. Like like it was created from off of one of my good friends. Uh, we were on Facetime. And I was hearing the beat, and I heard the beat, and I was like, "Ooh, like I like it." And I was like, "Ooh, <laughs> like 
I already knew. Like when I said, like I like it. And I was like, oh, and it just blossomed into that. Um, and that song there is just that's what that song is. I don't even have to even speak about that song. That song is what that song is. You feel me? Yeah. Um that after like it, it was a different. And different was about um, an ex of mine that uh, before I moved back here to Valdosta, I was dating someone. And like my, the last like four months of being in Atlanta was like bad. Like I lost my job. Um, I lost my, I got evicted from my first ever apartment. Um, Had to move in with my mom's friend. Like, uh, it was, it was crazy. Like, it was a crazy moment. And it was this girl that, like, she was there for me. Um, my ex, I was dating her at the time. She was there for me, like, made sure I was good. Like, I had never, like, for my, I was working since I was 14. I've been working. And, like, like here I am. Yeah. No, like, lost my Publix job. I, I worked at Publix, lost that job then went on to another job all of that and it, it was crazy and it all came from just me trying to stay in Atlanta and trying to not come back here and things just moved in the most you know different way so different was just about the girl um her being different like bringing something out of me she she made sure I was straight and I felt like it was more music that needed to be spoke about the women that are different because even though I wrote that song and it was it was basically about her mm -hmm. in a in a stand, it was still kind of pushed to more where it's like everybody can know like girl you different and you bring something on me that they didn't like any woman that is different like different in a good way not the bad way but in a good way like that song is for them it's for it's an anthem for different women women that hold things down that that even though when a brother is not um, perfect, they still hold it down. And that's where that song came from, it's for that. So yeah. that record, and then from, from different, it went into the juggernaut. Georgia Peach. Yeah. <laughs> and, woo! It's funny because Georgia Peach was actually the last song that I recorded. Like that was that was how it was supposed to be. Um, but I had one of my good friends, I was playing the album for him and he was like, bro, put Melvin Freestyle on me. I'm like, I don't know how people gonna take that, bro. Cause that that was a track for me. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I'm gonna put that on the, I'm gonna make that as his own single. And they was like, nah, put that on there now. Like, bro, that's 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 a jam. And I was like, bet, you know, and I respect my brother Aaron Max. Gotta shout him out. Um, he he's the reason. Um, that that Melvin Freestyle is actually on Love Bar, but with Georgia Peach, I'm, I'm getting I'm getting off. But Georgia Peach, it all came from my 22nd birthday. Um, my uncle took me out to uh, to a strip club, and yeah, it was. Bari. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. Okay. And one. <laughs> In time, and I will say that VIP line, true. <laughs> I didn't, hey, I didn't go in VIP. I'm saying she, she did say that. Now that was some real ball. <laughs> hey yo, hey yo. Hey. I had two. I had two. I didn't have one. I had two on my birth on my twenty second. I had two. It was it was amazing. It was amazing time. Time to be alive. <laughs> I threw threw three hundred ones. They they remember me. They remember me. I know they do. <laughs> oh my lord. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> you stressing me out, Barry. You stressing me out. <laughs> no, no, Georgia Peach. Uh. Yeah, it was, it was about a lot of stuff, but uh, it was also about like me knowing some some people that you know is in that lifestyle. Um, that's their, that's that's how they make their money, and I, I know those people. I know them. Not say those people. I know them 
um, on a personal level. So not, not knowing their background and everything, it's like, yeah, like I know this girl from the West Side trying, you know what I'm saying? Like I, I do, you know, I know a girl from the South Side. Like I'm from the West Side and I was being raised on and off from the West Side and South Side with my grandmother's nonprofit. So I know a lot of people, but it was more of just like, yeah, it was just a vibe. Like, yeah, I heard, I was like, Georgia Peach. And I was like, oh, it's an anthem for Georgia. <laughs> Georgia. Like, I knew it. I When I heard, when I sang, when I sung Georgia Peach, I like, I, it ain't no song called Georgia Peach. I know it ain't. I started looking it up. I'm like, nah. Nah, nah. <laughs> but uh, from there, um, then we get to Melvin Freestyle, where it really was a freestyle. Like I freestyle the rapping. Um, that, that's kind of different for me because I don't really rap. Yeah, you know, I don't. I don't really rap like that. But it, it was like I, what I wanted to express. I couldn't sing it because it was like it wanted to be felt like it needed to be felt. Like I wanted to rap. I, I had to like spit it because it was like I wanted people to feel me on that and even if it didn't make sense like even with the communication like I said I just checked my bank account I only had a dollar and eleven like I really have a dollar and eleven when I made that song like it was literally I got the screenshot I said I was looking at the three numbers like it's a message and I'm feeling like my angel's telling me to come back to heaven but I ain't really feeling that I'm trying to get back to seven seven is completion with myself I'm trying to get back to Melvin my great-grandfather I'm trying to give back. Oh my goodness. Sometimes I wish my father could get back. My father passed away um, when I was in uh, in Atlanta. Um, so I was talking about my father, like my actual blood father, but then I'm also talking about my father. Yeah. So we can have communication about my sisters that's feeling lost. I want to know what's the cost. We keep them from being tossed. Like the mother girls I used to sneak up in my loft. Like the mother girls I used to put up in my art. Uh, wait, ignoring all they calls. Uh, fake, but I don't want that for you. Like, ah, uh, it's so much in that. In that, like, like, what's the cost to keeping you know some of my my siblings from, you know, doing certain things that they do, or, or you know, because I feel like they do it because that's what's gonna make money or and then I was like wait I'm a hypocrite because the same women that I was you know I don't want my sisters to do or do and I'm like wait I'm glorifying um somebody else's sister you know what I'm saying so it was like me get coming to like the realization of just me stop being such a a hypocrite I'm just gonna be honest like I was raised in a in a in a church home so you know judgment you were always told not to be judgmental but it seems like um not for my family for the most part but just like people being around and being in that you know growing up and growing up a lot of people judge a lot of people so but I don't want like anybody that's around me to feel less than you know because yeah. I, I, I have a battle of always feeling less than I've always like growing up felt less than just in my own mind. So I was like, cause I don't know if I can love you. Cause I don't wanna hurt you. But I know I gotta push you far away. I'm so damaged. Like you can take that in multiple ways. You know, I don't even know. Like it was just like whatever it was was um good. I was pushing it away because I feel like I'm so damaged. I'm trying to heal myself. How can I heal and also, like keep a, a, a person that I, I may care about or, or anything around me when I'm feeling these feelings? So yeah. it was like pressing that, getting it out, where it's like, yo, like I'm damaged, right? I need you to, I, I'm gonna have to push you away because I know you need to grow. And that's something I've been big on is like understanding that, you know, just because you come across somebody or some people um, or people like, at the end of the day, your duty is to make sure they grow and have and be better, like regardless. And that goes with anything, with friendships, with relationships, with anything. So that's where the, the Melvin Freestyle came from, which is me basically saying I'm damaged, you know what I'm saying? But I know that I'm a heal and I know I'm, I'm gonna be um, 
better. But right now, it's like, yo, this is what I'm feeling. And you got to feel that. Like, you got to get that emotion out. So, yeah, that's that's love bar um, in the story. Uh-uh. Mm-mm. No, it's not. Because you forgot give or take. Like, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, give or take. Oh, my God. I was like, I was like, he, I know he skipped over it, but I'm a, I'm going to come up back around. I'm going to come back around. <laughs> Record, like it's so many, like no disrespect, give or take. Shout out to Tasha B. Shout out to Tasha. Cause I'm over here. Oh, so give or take. All right, so I'm gonna just keep it a book. I'm gonna keep it a book. Give or okay. take. Came. Shout out to Andrew. Like Drew, Andrew. Like the Drew I know. Drew. Mm-hmm. Okay. Drew is. Huge reason for give or take. And I'm going to tell you why. Because he was big. When I made like it, he was like, bro, we need to like it too. Mm-hmm. And I was like, ah, I don't want to like it too. He was like, no. Too. I don't want that. Oh, whatever. We had a whole nother song. Me and him had created something for, you know what I'm saying? Um, and that was that of uh, like it too. And then the beat, Tashi was in here, Drew was in here, I was in here like usually, we used to always be in here just chilling, you know what I'm saying, and I was showing him some beats, because I was getting ready to finish the album, and I played the beat, and Tashi was like, oh my gosh, I love that beat, and I'm like, Tashi, that's my beat, like, she was like, oh, well, well, I be, I get on the record, I was like, bet, but, you know what I'm saying, I don't know what I want to want to talk about on the beat, like, I don't, I don't know where I want to go with it, and then Drew was like, like it part two and I was like bet so then I already had a voice memo of like if you like it mm. <laughs> if you like it, and I love it like that melody was already like you know what I'm saying hints of the inspiration so if you know you know but um yeah like and then we just for the most part I had already wrote um my verse, like my verse, that front part, I had already wrote it, but it was for something else. I just had it, it hit me like like a couple weeks before that. Like, um, and yeah, that's how that song got created. Like it got created from there. Cause I also wanted Tasha to be on the album anyways. Yeah. Cause she was one of the big artists that I was working with. So I wanted her on there. So yeah, but uh, yeah, my bad. Dang, I skipped, give or take. <laughs> Give or take was actually after different, and then after give or take, wait, yeah, give or take went to Georgia Peach. Yeah, over here, like, cause those like I was gonna say this for later, but those like my favorite. That's my, those that my four go tos right there, like in that. <laughs> uh, those songs right there, yeah. <laughs> those my songs so I was like hmm so he just gonna skip over it like that <laughs> like you gotta be mindful like for me I'm working on the second album so like I'm thinking of all the I'm thinking of the lineup of that album yeah love bar, love bar because like the thing that people don't know is like when you go from Melvin Freestyle it goes into In Layers which is Love At like mm. That is the next chapter of Melvin Freestyle. So, um, yeah, a lot of these records be freestyles. And I'd be like, Lord, if I have to perform it, I got to really rehearse because a lot of these I just really like didn't even write. I just felt, wrote it. That, it out. That's a gift. That's something. But I like that you answered that because it feels like you um looking at my freaking uh, question list right now. So, well- <laughs> definitely not the question is um so you know i listened to the project obviously but i felt like he was like this sexy romantic type of person but like is that who you are in real life i feel like i'm getting more like like i said love bar was more of like the like the love letter to the industry but also to to my audience um i'm a huge r&b guy so you know that romantic loving type person is me mm-hmm. um i don't but as much um and that's why i think i get it out through my music like i get it out in that that way so it's like okay i got that emotion out i can be able to move on to other emotions and other 
stories and other things. So, um, but yeah, I am. I, I feel like now, like with my next project, like in layers, it's a lot more of like the love romantic, but not as, not as sexual. Um, yeah. I feel like Love Bari, I kind of, I made sure that it was sexual records on there that was like for the grown, you know what I'm saying? The older gener, the older crowd. Um, and I say older cause like 18 and up, you know what I'm saying? But, uh, now nah, my next project though, it's not going to be so much of that because I don't want to get to a point where it's like, that's what people know me as. Like yeah. they know me as the guy, that type of music, which is like, no, nah, that's not just me. Like that's a part of me. I'm human just like everybody else. I, you know, um, you know, so it's like, I don't want it to become like, oh, wow, he's going to drop another four tracks of just nothing but sex. It's like, nah, not really. Cause that's not all of me. Like that's just a piece of me. Yeah. And it, it made me think of this record I got on my album uh, called Off of Work. And it's going to feel, it's going to feel like it's going to, it's going to feel like a sex record, but it's actually an appreciation record. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, it's funny because I got it. You want me? You want me to play it real quick? If you want to play, it, yeah, do that. snippet little little snippet of that right there because you about it so i had to play that because like that's probably the only record on like my next project is like that so that's just, fine i heard I'm it to- heard parts of it on ig i believe yeah yeah, yeah. That, that's it's a, it's a it's a different different vibe but no nah, i'm i'm moving more from the sexual records to more of like that song is about appreciation, um, off of work. Like, I feel like fellas, um, us as men, and I'm even speaking to myself, we need to do more appreciation. Um, and I think that's just me getting older. Me older, I'm seeing how relationships are and how people are acting. And it's just like, how can I contribute to, um, in a positive way to, to that? So that's where off of work. All right, everybody, that was the third part of Bari B, the interview. As we learn more about Barry B, we will start to see how much determination and talent he truly holds. Part four will be dropping next week, so stay in the loop as we challenge his strengths and his character. Thank you so much for the support that you all continue to give. I'm Taisha, and I promise I won't bite my tongue.